super sorry that I can't do a live lesson with you. And the schedule is so whack at the moment um, that it looks like most afternoon slots after school isn't going to be possible with regards to a live lesson. I hope this helps you though. So let's just jump right into some Newton's revision. Okay, so what I've done is I've made a quick revision document just to help you guys understand the different scenarios that can be asked. This comes from your exam guidelines, um, as well as how we would draw the free body diagram and the equation with vector addition. So let's take a look. If I have a box, just a single box on a horizontal slope with an applied force parallel to the slope, the free body diagram would look like this. So that would be your normal force. That would be your weight or FG. You can say FG, you can say W, you can say FN, you can say N. This would be our applied force. Remember, that's the force that is applied in order to make the box move. And because this box is moving along, we assume a horizontal rough slope, it doesn't say frictionless, we're going to have friction acting in the opposite direction, right? So if the box is moving to the right, friction is moving to the left. Okay, so basically what we need to do is we need to draw the free body diagram. You need to indicate all the forces. Now, if we're talking about the forces along the horizontal plane, we are referring to these two forces. Can you see that force applied is not acting at an angle? It's acting horizontally. This, Fn, is acting perpendicularly. So if I had to ask you to do the net um, vector addition of forces f net parallel is equal to f applied plus force of friction okay that is our equation for f net parallel if i had to ask you to do f net perpendicular it would be fn plus fg so for example if the question said Calculate the normal force acting on the block. You look at your free body diagram and you see that the normal force is acting perpendicularly to the slope. When we say parallel and perpendicular, we always mean to the slope. So, acting perpendicular to the slope, 90 degrees to the slope, is Fn, our normal force, and Fg. So, if I ask you to look for Fn or to determine the magnitude of Fn, what you're going to do is you're going to think about this and you're going to say, the box is moving left, right, right? The box is moving like this. It's moving in this direction. It's not moving up or down. The box in the perpendicular direction is staying stationary. So technically, if next in the perpendicular direction is equal to zero because it's staying stationary, there's no acceleration. That means that Fn plus Fg will equal zero. So, for us to solve for Fn, we basically need to work out Fg and then isolate Fn. That's how that would work. If I told you that the box was moving at a constant velocity and I wanted you to work out, let's say, the applied force, and I gave you information about the frictional force, Fk, and let's say it's moving at a constant velocity, that means that F net equals ma acceleration is zero so f net will equal zero f net parallel then you'll add your two parallel forces make it equal to zero so f applied plus fk equals zero if you sub in your stuff for friction remember to choose a positive direction so let's say to the right is positive so that means our friction will be negative you sub in a negative then when you solve you'll be able to isolate f applied so I hope that you guys understand this and you would have known this if you obviously listened to me in class, which I know you did. You need to understand that being able to draw a correct free body diagram and to set up these equations is very important. Okay, so let's do the next one. Here I've got a normal force. The normal force is always exerted by the surface upon which the object is resting or moving. So it's the table exerting an upward force on the box. That's the normal force. The applied force is at an angle. Do you see here it was parallel to the slope. Here the applied force is going like this. This is F applied. If the box is moving, we're going to get frictional force that way. And we have our Fg. Now, 
if they asked you to do a free body diagram for marks, it would be a four marks and it's one mark per force. If applied is acting at an angle, which means that I can break it down into components. Remember, when I do my equation here, I'm going to have F net parallel. So I don't care about if applied as a whole. I'm going to want to include if applied parallel into that formula. Remember, if applied can be broken down into if applied parallel going to the right and if applied perpendicular going up. If applied perpendicular going up. These two together, if applied parallel and if applied perpendicular, together give me if applied going at an angle. So, when I'm writing if net parallel, I consider all the forces acting parallel to the slope, which would be friction and if applied parallel. So it will be if applied parallel, remember to write out applied in full, plus FK. If I'm looking for the forces acting perpendicularly to the slope, like this. Now, remember, if N is acting perpendicularly, if G is acting perpendicularly, but so is F applied perpendicular. You cannot forget about the components. So it's FN plus FG plus F applied perpendicular. Another thing that I just want to mention is you will always start these equations as addition. So you will make all of them positive. The only time they become negative is when we substitute in and we set a direction as positive. So let's say we were answering a question and I choose up as positive and I'm subbing in values now in the next line. Then you would make Fn positive. Then you would sub in F applied perpendicular as positive and you would sub in your weight or Fg force of gravity as negative. But you always start with vector addition. Another thing, I hope you guys can see that when I break up F applied into its components, I don't include solid F applied in either of my formulae. In F net parallel, I include F applied parallel. In F net perpendicular, I include F applied perpendicular. If applied is if applied perpendicular and if applied parallel added together. So it's almost like I ignore this one, if applied, once I've broken it up. But please remember, when doing a free body diagram for marks, you don't break up the vectors. You'll get a mark for that one, for that one, for that one, and for that one. On your free body diagram that you do, do on the side, for scribbles, for your information, for your help, then you can break it up. Okay, let's do another one. Getting slightly more difficult now because we're on a slope. I hope you guys remember my tip when it comes to drawing free body diagrams on a slope. I always, always, always draw in my slope with pencil. And then I draw my dots. If applied, is going parallel to the slope. So it needs to go parallel to the slope. Sorry, I'm drawing on a writing pad, so this is not perfect. That's F applied. Here's the slope. So here's my force applied. Friction is always parallel to the surface. So friction will go like this. The normal force is always 90 degrees perpendicular to the surface. So, if my slope is like this, my normal force is like this, perpendicular, like so, that's Fn. Think about, here's my slope, it's 90 degrees to my slope, and my weight is always going to point straight down to the ground, that's Fg. Erase your lines of your slope, you do not put the 90 degrees there. If you do, it's not a train smash, but rather just don't. And you will get one mark per force. Okay. But on your free body diagram that you do for scribbles, I need you to know that if applied is parallel to the slope. Parallel to the surface, which means it has no components. If N is perpendicular to the slope, it has no components. Friction, no components. But if G is acting at an angle to the slope, Here's your slope, remember? Here. Here. Can you see that if applied and FK are not acting at an angle to the slope? FN is acting at 90 degrees to the slope, so we can't break it up into components. If G is acting at an angle to the slope, so what I actually need to do there is I need to break it up into components. 
Easiest way to do this. Fg perpendicular will always be dead straight in line with your normal force, like this. This is Fg perpendicular. Fg parallel will be going like this. Now sometimes my, my students ask me, ma'am, how do I know which way Fg perpendicular and Fg parallel points? Well, think about the object. Which way is gravity pulling this object? It's pulling it down the slope. So Fg parallel needs to point down. Fg perpendicular, gravity is pulling this box down onto the table. So it needs to point down. Okay? It also makes sense because gravity, the single vector, is pointing down and towards the left. So it needs to go down and left. Now, when we do our sum, F net parallel is equal to F applied plus FK. And please don't forget about FG parallel. People forget about that one all the time. And you will get the calculation wrong. So F net parallel, parallel to the slope. I've got F applied plus FG parallel plus FK. Remember, you always start off with vector addition. You don't make any of them negative yet. That comes in when I choose a direction and I substitute values in. If net perpendicular, if n and, ooh, not fg, sorry, if n and if g perpendicular, if n plus if g perpendicular. Remember, think of the slope. It's all of those forces that are 90 degrees to the slope. And because we broke up FG into its components, we do not include full on FG or solid FG in either of our equations. Okay, last one. This is more interesting than all the others because it's an object. Object is on a slope and if applied is acting at an angle. Sure, so a lot going on here. So let's do my slope. In pencil okay I've got my object object is represented as a dot arrows point away from the dots so let's start off with the ones that are always the same FG will always point straight down to the ground the normal force will always be perpendicular to the surface here's my surface perpendicular to my surface is like that just imagine you're trying to get this perfect 90 degree angle over there okay and then lastly, the one that will always be the same is the box is moving up the slope. So friction will point parallel, will be parallel to the slope, but it will point in the opposite direction of the motion. So friction will be going down. Now, ooh, there goes my arrow, it disappeared. Oh, no, no, no. Please enjoy your arrow skew. If you draw your arrow skew, you are telling me that that, for, that that force is acting at an angle to the slope. It's not. Okay. Lastly, force applied is at an angle, so I can't draw it like this. No, that means it's parallel to the slope. What I need to do is, here's my slope, it's acting at an angle to the slope. Obviously, I mean, you don't have to really make it to scale, but try more or less, so that's if applied. This would be your free body diagram for marks, four forces, four arrows. However, Obviously, you'll erase your little lines because you don't need them. There we go. However, on your diagram that you do for scribbles, what I want you to do is you're going to now break up the ones acting at an angle into their components. In this case, the box is on a slope. The slope is at an angle. That means weight is acting at an angle to the slope. So it needs to be broken up into its components. So does F applied. How do I break up FG into its components? Remember, it's going to be FG parallel, FG perpendicular. FG perpendicular, which means acting at 90 degrees, will always be in line with FN because FN is also a perpendicular force relative to the surface. So that will be FG perpendicular. The box, gravity is pulling the box down the slope. So FG parallel will be going down the slope. Okay, just note, this is a 90 degree triangle over here. The angle of the slope, the 30 degrees, is that angle over there. Do trig, it works out. Then, 
if applied, if applied is going up and to the right relative to the slope. So it can be broken up into if applied, parallel, going to the right, and if applied, perpendicular, going up. Let's quickly do our if nets parallel now. Now, there's a lot going on. You can't leave out anything. Be careful. So, if applied, parallel, my thing is freaking out now. If net parallel will be FK, if applied parallel, and FG parallel. So if applied parallel, the order doesn't matter here. If applied parallel plus FG parallel plus FK. Then if net perpendicular will be FN, FG perpendicular, and if applied perpendicular, so Fn plus if applied perpendicular plus Fg perpendicular. All right. Remember, you start off with a vector sum. You only add in minuses when you choose a positive direction and you're subbing in values. Knowing how to do a free body diagram for every situation and knowing how to do the vector sum here, the sum of the forces, will help you so much. If it's a Newton's first law problem, if the object is stationary, if it's moving at a constant velocity, constant speed, is in equilibrium, any of those terms, F net equals MA, acceleration is zero, so F net will equal zero. This F net, I can use either F net parallel, so you'll put all of those forces over here, make it equal to zero, and solve for the unknown force. Which one you use depends on the question. If I ask you to work out the normal force, let's use this um, last block as a scenario. If I ask you to work out the normal force acting on this object here, you won't use F net parallel. You won't put F net parallel over here. You would put F net perpendicular. You would go F net perpendicular equals zero. The box is not moving in the perpendicular direction. It's not going up. It's not going into the slope. It's not flying up into the sky, as I always like to tell you guys. So you would go Fn plus F applied perpendicular plus Fg perpendicular equals zero. Then you would sub in your stuff for F applied perpendicular, sub in your stuff for Fg perpendicular. Remember, you're going to have to use trig over here because it's components. And you would solve for Fn. All right. I hope this is making it a bit easier. I know that this isn't actually practicing any questions. But I hope that this helps overall for any question that you have to tackle.